Today we're on press and we're going to be printing the index design that you saw me separate. You saw that we turned this into five colors, a highlight white, a base white, and a black. We have these all up here on screen. I've already printed some imagery. Now we're gonna go through and show you the print order that I decided on once I actually printed that first image. As we spoke to, we try to determine our print order before we go on press. With index, that can be a little bit of a crapshoot. We're looking at when that dot lays down next to the other dot, we need those inks to be of similar opacities. It very much goes hand in hand with uh, how far apart the colors are on the color spectrum. The further apart they are, uh, the more contrast they're gonna have when they print. And sometimes that's what you want in the print. Uh, but if you need to have color blending happen with the dots interweaving with other dots, you need those inks to have similar coverage, similar opacities, so that they one so that one color does not then dominate the other color. And I found when I got this on press that some of those colors did that. One color would dominate the other. So I ended up changing my print order fairly dramatically. And you're gonna see that as I go from screen to screen. The ink system I'm using today is a Wilflex Rio mixing system, and I'm using Bolt White for my underbase. We're gonna go through the process of printing each color. We're only gonna flash once, and I'm gonna to talk to each color in each section of the print as we go. So I've done a lot of my testing on black shirts because black is nice and we have a lot of them, but because we have both a base white and a black, we can print this on any number of colors. And of course, if we wanna go on white, we just don't need to print the white base. So I'm gonna print the white and we're gonna go from there. So we've got a slightly different look with our platen. These are the bigger platens, the 18 by 22s. And my screens are of course 20 by 24s. So when they come down, you're gonna see that the platen covers the majority of the screen. We're just giving you a different look, showing you that you can do this with different size platens. It's not a big deal. One of the things that's very important is the understanding of off contact when you're printing wet on wet. Off contact is the minimum distance needed for the screen to snap back off of the print right behind your squeegee. So there is no hard and fast rule for that other than the observation of is your screen coming off of the print. In order to help you accomplish that, it is a good practice to be able to either have an off contact riser here, whether that's a piece of cardboard, a piece of metal, coins, nickels, dimes, whatever. It just helps to keep that screen stable and off your platen. We'll also talk about this in the sim process video because all of those habits are very important. So here I'm using the shirt is here on the platen. So that's also going to help a little bit with that off contact. It's not perfect, but it is going to assess and you'll see how all of that behaves. I'm gonna print without any off contact assist up here because I want you to see how it's going to look, how it's gonna behave and what you're going to encounter if you are not chasing these better habits so that you see what's going on. All right, let's get printing. Here's my white base. My white base is on a 230 and all my colors are on 305s. Remember the index resolution that we chose was 180 DPI. I do have uh, a film that I created with uh, the same image and uh, halftone percentages at 180, 220, and 300 DPI. So you guys can see what it looks like side by side and why some resolutions are better than others. We'll get to that a little bit later in the video. So the white is on a 230. I'm going to do a flood and a print. And your, it is your choice whether or not you do a two stroke or a one stroke. It all depends on how clean your ink deposit is. How's that look? Let's give that one more dry stroke.
There we go. Now, your mileage will vary when you're pulling a squeegee. Just like with sim process, you are very much going to want to print more like you're an automatic machine, like you're, like you're a robot, like you're an automatic press. There is a certain strength to, in order to get that downforce and the shear force necessary to really create a good clean print. Now, if you can't do that with a wood squeegee, there are ergonomical squeegees that help with angle. There's an easy grip squeegee that will help with that as well. Find the tools that are gonna work best for you, but recognize that this is a very physical process. You're gonna see me, a big guy, you know, put a lot of downforce on these prints in order to get the cleanest detail possible in order to reproduce the print. So our white's printed, now we need to flash it, and then we'll continue on in sequence. Okay, the white is nice and dry. If you're, if you're ever printing wet on wet and you have an image that has a lot of solid areas of coverage, remember that you are going to struggle a little bit with printing wet on wet on those solid flat areas. There is a point in that printing where you can end up getting some weird ink split happening and you can end up picking off some of the ink from your white base. Um, so when you're printing, having too smooth a print on a 100% solid area can be problematic. A lot of that is fixed when you go to higher tension screens and proper off contact so the screen can snap off right behind that print a lot easier. But of course, most of us, especially manual screen printers, don't quite have that tool set or the skill set yet to reach that. So you may encounter this a lot more than an auto printer will. Okay, let's print the black. As you can see, there's a lot of coverage of black on this and I am printing this early in the sequence. My goal is to create a gray scale of the print. And it doesn't look very good right now. My goal is to create a gray scale of the design whenever you're doing you know, a lot of black uh, at a design like this so that the colors can fall on top of it. It's much more of a sim process type of approach and you went through and you saw how the separations went. There was a lot of black in this design, a lot of dark. But when you print those colors on top of that, now you get a lot more richness and color depth. And how well that turns out is going to depend entirely on the opacity and the coverage of the inks you're using in your, from your mixing system. Okay, next color is going to be my gray. And you can see with that next print, we smoothed out a lot of the black on top of the white and we're starting to create that grayscale value. Of course, I just printed a gray, so you're seeing a little bit of that gray come down as well. But that evening out of the colors is what's gonna happen when you print wet on wet. Your squeegee selection is also really important in this process. For my white base, I used a 70 durometer, but for my colors, I'm using 70, 90, 70s. With that 90 in the middle, it gives a very stiff feel to the squeegee, but that 70 edge is, that 70 durometer edge is still soft to allow for a little bit of flex as the squeegee is going across the image. All right, next color is now going to be my blue. I originally set this up in the, so I set this up in the original print order that we had in Photoshop, but this is where I ended up needing to change it. I'm putting the blue now earlier in my print sequence. And this is the strange thing about index. When you print a color, it's originally gonna look very dominant in the print. You need to go through the entire sequence to see how the colors will, will print next to each other, and as a result, blend into the color next to it and how one color can end up dominating or not during the print. So you can see the blue started to blend in a little bit. The other color is taking, is taking shape. We're starting to see how the design is coming through. 
So as you can see, we changed up our print order quite a bit as I'm jumping around between screens. The next one I'm gonna print is over there. So now we can see the designs start to come together a little more. The blue that was really dominant in some of these areas has started to mellow out. We're starting to see the color development in the ears. And now that's starting to come together a lot more. This, this screen, this color, really ties the rest of the color development together. And now I just need the highlight white. That is the best representation of these separations with these ink mixes that I can create. When we compare this image side by side with the one on screen, the separations that we did in Photoshop, we will notice a couple of things. Number one, the overall image integrity, the detail, the shapes, the shadows, everything is almost perfect in comparison to what we have on screen. But what you'll notice most is the color shift. We lost a decent amount of red in our design. That is due to two things that's going on. Number one, the Pantone matches that I had were a little bit on the white side. They did not match the color swatch. So I'm like, that's okay. This will be great for the education part of this because it is an everyday part of color mixing, matching and printing that is a part of our everyday lives. So if I was to go back and add a little red or ask for a reformulation of the Pantone color, re remix it and print it, I will have more red in my design. But the other thing that I wanted to show in this is if we were to print this on a white t-shirt, you will see different color development happening. And that is directly because of the white base that we're printing on. When you're over printing a white base, that color will print thinner as it has nowhere to go. It's gonna stand up on top of the white base and then you're gonna print it because it can't sink into the shirt. It's gonna print thinner, closer to the actual stencil thickness. And then you're getting another screen that prints one on one that keeps getting it thinner and thinner. Okay, so, so I have a great question. Would I ever take a Pantone mix that I've, that I've had and go back to that mixing system components and add a little bit of a component in order to make it look correct? Absolutely, I would. And then on that container, I would note exactly how much I added. Because I would then, if I ever need to reproduce that print so it looked the same, I need to rematch that color I printed. So you always want to document whatever changes you make to your inks. Whether that's like, hey, my gray is too strong in this design. There's too much white going down. I need it to blend more. Add some clear. Add 20%, maybe, maybe 30 at the most. That extra clarity, will, that extra clear will add translucency to that ink so that it does not dominate the colors next to it. It'll allow for better side-by-side -side dot blending. So why do I talk about printing the design wet on wet for color buildup? That's because that first print is always going to end up looking lighter than your seventh print, your tenth print. We need, through the system, you know, through the process of printing wet on wet, to let the ink build up on the back of the screen. Here's the black on the back of the gray screen. Here's the black, the gray, the blue. All the colors, this was, yeah, this is the last color I printed before the highlight white. These are all the colors as they'll slowly build up on the back of this screen. There is the culmination of all the ink colors building up wet on wet on the back of the screen before they get to the highlight white. Is it a perfect representation of the image? No, because those early colors, because I haven't printed that many yet, it's only been 13, 14 prints. There were my, where my color is now stable, but the full color transfer hasn't happened all the way to uh, the back of this screen. 
That will happen eventually, but your color will remain stable on your shirt. All right, so I'm gonna take this and run it through the dryer. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit more about um, color development on during your print cycle. Uh, what it look and why you get a little bit more color, actual color out of a print direct to fabric than over a white underbase. Um, here we have these side by side and you can see in this one that while the dark light balance looks the same, the overall design looks the same, you can see we have a little bit better color development here on the white garment. That's again because that color is going undisturbed onto and then into the white fabric. The white fabric, of course, is giving us that nice light colored background. Where on this one, we have the white underlay and that is stopping that ink from going anywhere. And as a result, when you print, it's forcing us to lay down a slightly thinner ink deposit. When we're printing direct to fabric, we can force through a little bit more ink as a result. And then when we print wet on wet, that color now goes right into the fabric on a white shirt where on a white underlay, that ink is going to then spread out a little bit. You can see that color development most clearly here on this side of the elephant above the eye and here in the ear, where on the gray that I printed, it's a little bit lighter and we're seeing a little bit less color development there. On the one that you just watched me print, I, I ended up getting a little bit more color. I'm working towards building that color a little bit more by changing my angles and my print technique to lay down a little bit more color than I am to shear it. But you can see that even though I got better image integrity out of it, color development, the colors are still off. This one ha still has more of that reddish orange in comparison to this one. They are getting a hell of a lot closer though. Again, I was working towards that. So why, why would you choose to index instead of doing a, a sim process? There could be a number of reasons. Number one, you don't have RIP software. Um, and you, you don't have that ability to go back and make curve changes and, and you know, re-bitmap it and, and do a fake halftone conversion. It can be a lot of work in the dot development. It's not as good as you want it to. It, it works, you can do it. It's just not as good as if you go through RIP software to create the halftones in that RIP process. Index is also a really nice way to print in which you typically do not see any dots. If we were to go over this with, with the magnifier, you know, zoom over the entirety of it, you don't see much in the way of dot development. Uh, you will if you're doing some very specific things, very faint uh, types of prints with a white underlay. Um, there are some combinations in which you can, you know, very much see dots. Um, but once you print these dots, which are, again, they're side by side, you're doing a solid one layer of ink. You're not stacking any inks for color development. Everything is side by side. Those, those dots, once they hit the fabric, they're gonna fuzz a little bit. And as a result, you don't see dots. Index has its place. Index is typically used if you just need to set up quick, quick turn. If you have a, a need to see a print with little to no dot structure. You're, you're a shop that's used to mixing and running Pantone colors and you've got those on the shelves and you understand that, index is really quick and easy to do. Remember, the quality of the print and how easy it is to print is resolution dependent. You don't wanna drop below 180 by very much if you do, because you need those dots to be small enough to blend well. Going above 220, even at 220, there starts to be some headaches. I have a couple of screens burned. I have a 230 mesh and a 305 mesh burned. Uh, with a design that was indexed at 180, 220, and 305. And we're going to show you uh, some mesh interference, what the dot sizes look like, and how when you print that wet on wet, you have to have such precise control over what you're doing at those higher resolutions because that dot is so tiny that when it prints, it can become a solid sheet if you've got those heavy shadow areas. With, with index and sim process, we're both worried about the generalized color space within an area where with index, we're trying to pick a singular color to make it as much as possible, you know, using as few colors in an area as possible. Because again, because of that dot on dot side by side, um, 
you end up getting muddy areas like in this trunk. We talked about this section of the trunk, how it was just kind of weird looking and we would talk about it when we got on press. You end up with stuff like that that just doesn't really work right. Where with Sim Process, you can generate a couple of colors that then lay on top of each other. You can control those tonal values so that they lay down and create the color you want. With Index, you're at the mercy again of what Photoshop decides to blend it with. But again, that's the beauty of Index. I pick another color for that spot. So if you have the press capability, the press size, Index can be wonderfully simple. Fast turn, you know, low, low, uh, low amount of effort. The more you do, the easier it becomes. Um, and you can get jobs up and done quickly, where with Sim Process, it takes a little bit more time and investment of energy and knowledge to get to that same level. Again, both are going to produce fantastic prints. Uh, it's, it's a matter of your shop's skill level, um, your print charge and what you're getting for the job and whether or not it's worth the investment and whether or not your customer wants to pay for that. All right, and that's index printing. The next time you see me on press, we're going to be going over SIM process. We're going to use the same number of screens. We're going to talk about the same general types of printing, proper off contact, squeegee usage, mesh counts, all the rest of it. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in learning more about color separations, watch our full course on screenprinting.com, where we will dive into spot color, color reduction, index, grayscale, and the always popular SIM process.